Same flannel, different day. No, I swear I'm not a filthy slob. I just film videos wearing shirts and then I take the shirts off because it gets hot in here. So I take off all my clothes. Well, maybe not all of them, but still. Thick ass flannels, hot room, those don't mix. This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel. And so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. In this video, we're going to be talking about another new TCG exclusive that has been spoiled for release to us in Code of the Duelist, with the FA fucking awful archetype being something that's not really desired in terms of card design and TCG exclusive releases. I'm hoping that this one ends up being just a little bit better. And from just this one card that's been spoiled, it looks like the potential for that to be the case could very well be there, especially considering what this archetype could be constructed upon. Now, the archetype that we are messing around with and what we're looking at is Vandreds, and the card that we're looking at today is Vandred Hordehound. It is one of the TCG exclusives. It is also the promo for the set, so when you enter a sneak peek, you get an ultra-rare version of this card, so thusly, it's going to be very easy for you to get this card, and it is still going to be in the set as a TCG exclusive, but it's probably either going to be a rare or a super in its other form of variety or something like that. Typically, that's the case. Usually, the promo is of a higher physical card rarity than what you have access to in the set. But, Vandred Hordehound. It is a level 3 dark zombie effect monster with 0 attack and 2100 defense, and its effect is... If this card is in your graveyard, you can discard one Vandred card. Special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. A Vandred monster ritual summoned, ritual summoned, using this card on the field gains the following effect. You can only use each of the preceding effects of Vandred Hordehound once per turn. So, meaning you can only use its special summon from grave effect once per turn. But the f effect that it gives the ritual monster that you tribute it to summon is once per turn, quick effect, you can target one spell or trap your opponent controls and banish it. It is not a during either player's turn effect, it's just a spell speed 2 effect that can be activated on your own turn, which is generally pretty respectable if these ritual monsters that you're summoning, these Vandred ritual monsters, uh, because it says specifically a Vandred monster ritual summoned using this card on the field, so that would indicate that the Vandred monsters that you'd be summoning, or the ritual monsters you'd be summoning, would be Vandreds, meaning the Vandred is a ritual-based archetype. Basically, you give the monster an additional effect to allow it to be a quick effect MST during your own turns. But it banishes the card, so that's actually cool. It's a quick effect Cosmic Cyclone, more accurately, uh, in terms of how it functions. Now, we've known for a little while that one of the TCG exclusive archetypes was going to be a ritual-based archetype archetype and Vandred this card the promo just reinforces that further because you have to have a Vandred monster ritual summoned using this card on the field as material to gain the effect so obviously there's going to be some Vandred ritual monster in the scope of things but the reason we've known for the past month or so that we were getting a ritual based TCG exclusive archetype was that when Konami put the information out on their site their official site showing the sneak peek information of where you can go and all that they always show a picture of the map and they show a really blurry picture of the set checklist and over in the TCG exclusive column we had a set of four cards which is just fine for a size for a common TCG exclusive archetype nowadays we usually get four cards now rather than five like we did back in the day with the burning abyss era and shit like that uh, but even then did burning abyss get four or did they get five can't remember but not important not important enough to matter for this regardless four cards is a good size for what you can expect to be getting in a tcg exclusive art type and on the checklist there was a little spot at the very beginning of the tcg exclusive section that had two effect monsters one really 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 obviously blue ritual monster and a spell card basically very likely going to be the ritual spell used to summon it now I would really like to see a lot of good things coming out of this archetype because ritual summoning is one of my favorite mechanics in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! 
it is second only to synchro summoning in terms of my favorite summoning methods because it's so weirdly intricate. Fusion summoning is almost identical to ritual summoning, but because the card exists in your extra deck, it has a different sort of like intricacy to it like where you don't have to draw the piece the monster you're summoning and the method to summoning it like it's it's a completely different thing necros was one of my favorite meta decks that i've ever played in fact it is the second on my list in terms of favorite decks i've ever played of all time like necros the boys in blue are back if this is a good ritual archetype and i would love for there to be another good ritual archetype in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, because it's one of my favorite summoning methods because of how weirdly odd it is yet when it works it's so like awesome to see how it works now the van dread archetype it could be an entire zombie base we're not really sure about that because just this card is a dark zombie effect monster and kind of hoping that the rest of the archetype is zombies as well because if that's the case that opens the archetype up to a lot of good support in the form of unizombie mizuki Book of Life, all that sort of stuff. And then on the ritual side of things, I'm hoping that they design this ritual archetype very well. Like, if they design it to use one or two ritual spells, I'm kind of hoping that they go to the extreme of naming all the monsters in the ritual spells that could be summoned so that you could have access into cards like Pre-Preparation of Rites for the theme. Because Pre-Prep is such an amazing amount of support for a card that supports a summoning mechanic as already hindered as rituals that if they want to make this archetype good it needs to have something like that that it can use to get the simple plus one because ritual summoning in reality is always going to offset you down a card like you're always going to be using a ritual spell a monster or more for tributing and then you have to summon the ritual monster from your hand now you are going to be using two of those cards to summon your one ritual monster, meaning that you are going to be taking a neg 2 to card economy, but in the case of necros, the mirrors would replace themselves if you had a clear board, so that was kind of how you could claw advantage back, and then cards like Shrit, Exa, Great Sorcerer had trigger effects when they were tributed that also searched other cards, so it evened out advantage-wise, and then you had weird cards like Mirror that could banish from Grave instead, all that sort of nonsense and rigmarole that made Necros very good at maintaining its advantage pool and its capability of making plays. I think any good ritual archetype that's released from here on forward has to be able to incorporate pre-preparation of rites into it in any way it can if it's going to be successful because they're obviously not going to be printing ritual cards that are on the level of Necros ever again because they've seen what could happen if they give a ritual based archetype so many good effects and so many ways to manage resources they're not going to make that same mistake again if they don't want to just shake the game up a bit they're not going to be doing that again for any ritual archetype in the future so whatever deck they make that uses the ritual mechanic needs to be able to use pre-preparation of rights so honestly vindred horde hound i really like it in terms of its initial concept what it gives us information of what could basically come out of this there's a lot of speculation that can be done about the rest of the archetype and i'm looking very forward to seeing what the remainder of the tcg exclusives from this block of this deck are going to be if the ritual monster and the ritual spell are good then jesus i could easily see this being another ritual deck that could potentially compete in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, especially since we are entering Link era and extra deck spam decks are hindered to a degree and things are going to only develop further in that category. Although the blue cards I'm trying to summon right now are not Link monsters. Let me tell you this right now. But anyway, I would absolutely love for rituals to be decent again in the coming months of Yu-Gi-Oh because like I said, one of my favorite summoning mechanics and it's one that I always enjoy playing out because the decks that utilize it are usually some wacky shit in terms of how they function so that is basically my opinion on that sort of nonsense i know i talked a lot more about what could happen rather than van dread whoredown but i mean like this card literally just does nothing but open up the gate for speculation of what this next tcg exclusive archetype could be especially when fa was such a fucking flop <laughs> like absolutely but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as per usual links as always are in the description down below to my facebook and patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly help some future projects that i have that i want to do come into fruition a bit easier and faster help support the channel support things that you like 
support my ability to continue to make content, and if you found the video informative and just want to help me out on a financial situation. Any of these reasonings and justifications, if you can find it, to go and check that out and maybe consider contributing to one of the reward tiers to get some things back for yourself as well, then definitely you would have my eternal gratitude if you did so. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do, and Basically, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. As I've already said, again, let me know what your thoughts are on this card and what you think the ritual archetype could be in the comments down below. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I will see you in the next video.